I really don't want to do this, but let's talk about the Marvels. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! Featuring three strong, capable, and diverse women. Put a chicken in it, make her gay! And I'm not gonna watch it. The MCU lost me a long time ago. To be precise, they lost me when they launched Captain Marvel. And I didn't watch that movie. I know it made a gazillion ton of money in the box office. It made like a billion dollars in the box office. But the reason that I didn't watch that movie is, this is gonna sound a bit strange, but it's because I saw the videos of all the actors Angry, they, they seemed angry at her. Not angry, angry is not the word. They seemed annoyed by her personality more than everything. In the interview where Thor was there, and um, it was Thor and her, she was going on like she was the strongest character ever to be alive in the MCU, and Thor was like, oh, I don't think so, you know, I'm Thor. Is, is there any competition between the different sex, the different groups? Is there There's no competition, competition for me because I'm the strongest, so it's just yeah. kind of like a different... Oh, well, yeah, she let her think that, but... Yeah. It's not. As you I've are. said before, it's, not, it's just a fact. It's not a personal opinion. No, and no. It's not a reflection on what you can't do, but it is also kind of a reflection on all the... It's do. just that you, you just, you're just not that strong. <laughs> <laughs> but she's really smart, and, you know, yeah. but... Should we have a fight? And she can eat bacon. I feel like, like we're, we're fighting business. right now. <laughs> I think it's been an all day thing. In that moment, I thought, oh my God, here it comes. People have been warning about this for a long time. The strong female diverse character is better than everybody else, is stronger than everybody else. She can do everything bigger, better, stronger than anybody in the films. And I thought, I'm not gonna watch that movie. I am 100% not gonna watch that movie. And the only reason that it made a billion dollars in the box office in the first place was because it was sandwiched in between the two most famous movies of the MCU. I think if I'm not mistaken, Infinity War and Endgame. That was the only reason it made a billion dollars. Since then, I haven't really watched any Marvel movies. Have I watched anything? I think I haven't watched any of the series, any of the movies. I haven't watched anything. Now that I think about it, I haven't watched absolutely anything. Obviously, I haven't watched She-Hulk. I haven't watched Loki. I, I did watch the first season, but I didn't really like it. So this next season, I'm not watching it. I haven't watched um, this I don't know what it's called. This other TV series about the lady who gets the bracelet, uh, Miss Marvel, I think. I don't even know what it's called. Um, the other one was the replacement of Captain America. You've got to do better. I haven't watched that either. And the thing is, yeah, I'm the target audience of the MCU. I do not need a 40 year old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about a wrinkle in time. It wasn't made for him. I want to know what that film meant to women of color, to biracial women, to teen women of color, to teens that are biracial. And for the third time, I don't hate white dudes. Am I saying that I hate white dudes? No. And I'm also saying I don't hate white dudes. I grew up loving the MCU Iron Man, Captain America, and then the widow came in and I loved the movies. Like I was really involved in watching the MCU, especially with Iron Man, like, that was a groundbreaking movie. I loved that movie. I mean, it was a beautiful moment for like, I really loved the MCU. I watched all the Avengers, all the Iron Man movies, all the Captain um, America movies, Thor, then came Thor. The last Thor movie, when we got the female Thor, I didn't even finish it. I, like, I literally, when, when I got to the point in the movie when she picks up the hammer, that's when they lost me. Because it, it just, you can see that they're trying to jam it in your throat, you know, diverse women, strong female characters, and I, I just had enough. Like, every time I'm watching a TV series or I'm watching a movie and they start to 
push that shit on me, done, I'm not watching it anymore. You could call me a bigot and you could say, oh, it's because you're a misogynistic, misogynistic bigot and, and this and that. Well, I've watched many, many movies with black lead characters, with female characters. I don't like to use the example of The Hunger Games, but it is an example. I loved those movies. I read the books. I went to the cinema to watch the movies. Like it's, and I don't like to use that example because of what Jennifer Lawrence has have said has said in a recent interview where she said that she was the first female character in a hero movie. It's some stupid, like shit like that. But I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie. Yeah. What? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie. Yeah. What did you say? You bitch! Hi! Feeling a little inadequate? I like pain. Because it wouldn't work. We were told girls and boys can both identify with a male lead, but yeah. boys cannot identify with a female lead. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> And it just makes me so happy every single time I see a movie come out that just blows through every single one of those beliefs. That's why I don't like to use that example. But nevertheless, I did enjoy those movies. Like I said, I read the books. Like, what, what are they talking about that we don't watch those movies or we don't watch the modern movies because it's all diverse women, because it's black characters or black lead characters. What, what kind of stupid nonsense is that? We loved Blade. We loved uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. We don't care who the lead is. We don't care Terminator with Sarah Connor. We don't care Alien. Like, we don't care what sex the character is. We don't care what ethnicity the character is. The Equalizer, I love those movies. It's, it's like the character, the sex of the character or the sexual orientation of the character or any external characteristics are irrelevant to us. We want a good movie, well-written, that's going to let us forget about our problems, our worries for two hours and a half. We don't want to be lectured. We don't want to be told how, bigot, how bigoted we are and how we need to do better. You've got to do better, Senator. And the Marvels is the epitome of all of this. The Marvels, it's where things start to turn around. We had the episode of South Park criticizing all of this. It means put a chick in the linguine and make her fucking gay! I think it's the first step in Hollywood, whatever you want to call it, is the first step in the right direction. We don't watch movies to be lectured. We don't watch movies to tell us how bigoted we are and how misogynistic we are and how the patriarchy is ruling the world. That's something that I don't understand. How could Barbie made a gazillion dollars in the box office being such a pandering feminist crap? I'll take a high level, high paying job with influence, please. Okay, you'll need at least an MBA and a lot of our people have PhDs. Isn't being a man enough? Isn't being a man enough? And one of the reasons I think it is, is because they lied to you. In the trailers, there was never any hints at any pandering in the movie. But then when you got to watch the movie, it was like a trap. You were set up to watch, you know, a lighthearted movie, you know, kind of, you know, just two hours of fun, enjoyable, I don't know. And then you got there and it's this pandering about the patriarchy, about how men are oppressing women. And that's what everybody is tired about. That's what everybody 
women, men, it doesn't matter. This is not something to empower women. I think women are tired as well because you cannot keep telling women that the world is out to oppress them, the world is a dangerous place, but at the same time telling them that they're as equally strong as men, they can do everything the same as a man can. Women can do anything. Isn't being a man enough? I, I, I don't think those two points of view logically can be aligned. How can you tell anyone that the world is out to get them, that the world is an oppressive place, that it doesn't matter what they do, the world it's always trying to put them down, but at the same time telling them that they can do everything that they want, they have no thoughts of their own, and all they have to do is let go of all that oppressing to fulfill their potential. And once they do that, they will achieve everything they want. I think those two things don't align together. I think the Marvels is the tipping point for cinema. I think it's gonna take maybe a couple of years for it to turn around again. Like, it's horrible to watch movies and TV shows right now. It's literally agonizing. You know, you start a TV series and you're waiting for the moment when they start to criticize the patriarchy and when they start to, you know, put a chick in it and make her gay. It means put a chick in the linguine and make her fucking gay! Yeah, I hope things turn around and I hope in a few years they start to make good movies again. They start to make movies where the writing is the important thing, where the content of the movie is the most important thing, where we value the artistic prowess of the movie and not all this crap that's going on right now where they're trying to tell you how patriarchal you are, how misogynistic you are, and if you're a woman, how you just need to let go of the chains that have been holding you back all this time. Nothing you do is ever wrong and you will be the best version of yourself if you realize just how wonderful you are and how the world has kept you down. And if you do that, everything will be hunky-dory. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And like always, see you in the next one.